Good morning everybody, my name is John Cheney from Workbooks. Uh, if you don't know who we are, we're actually the UK's largest British CRM vendor uh, and we specialise in providing CRM into the mid-market. So today's discussion, presentation, is all about aligning sales and marketing. So we've been through hundreds of CRM deployments and as part of that process, we're often helping align the sales and marketing teams together. And this slide kind of explains the theory so when you're sitting doing the planning, looking at how you're going to go to market, it's all pretty straightforward in your, in your spreadsheets and your business plans. You come up with your ideal customer profile, who we're going to target. You come up with your routes to market, your personas, am I targeting marketing people, sales people, IT directors. You work out whether you're going to go via channel or direct. And then you align your sales and marketing up behind that. So in theory, it's great, right? But quite quickly, you actually start doing marketing and you start doing selling and sometimes it's not quite as rosy. You have salespeople go in, marketing deliver me rubbish leads, or we need more leads, why aren't they coming through? Sales guys are going, marketing, is it good? Marketeers go, we gave you loads of leads, why didn't you tell us what happened with those leads? We can't see whether the leads are working or whether they're not working. And quite quickly, marketing and sales can go into different directions, and they really aren't looking at the business together. But if you can align your sales and marketing teams together, you can have a significant impact on your business. So in a number of recent studies, serious decisions recognize that aligning sales and marketing would allow your revenues to grow by 24% over three years more quickly, and your profits would be even higher, 27% year-on-year growth. Marketing professionals, reckoned you could get 36% better renewal rates and 38% better win rates if your marketing and sales teams were working well. So the theory is great, sales and marketing should be working together, but how do we actually make that happen? Well, in our view, marketing and sales is a combination of art and science. And you really need to be measuring the science to see how effective your teams are. And if you align your sales and marketing team with a common language, so they're all speaking the same words, and you have a common process, <clears throat> excuse me, it will improve your sales and marketing execution. And that's really what we're going to talk about today, how, how you bring the teams together, how you align them, and how you accelerate your revenue growth. So the first thing is, we need a common view to avoid this cartoon of sales and marketing looking in completely different directions. And the first thing we would recommend is defining what your ideal customer profile looks like. So at Workbooks, we know our ideal customer profile are typically mid-sized enterprises. We're typically pro uh, uh, targeting the marketing director, the sales director, or the CEO. And so as we generate leads, we can measure whether those leads meet our ICP criteria. Are the revenues of those organisations, the number of employees of those organisations, and the personas the ones that meet what our sales team would typically expect to talk to. So we can measure how effective we are at generating our leads. It's also really important for your sales and marketing team to be looking at the sales and marketing funnel together with a common lens working together to talk about how you attract new customers, how you move people through that funnel, and how ultimately you convert them into real clients in your business. And the way you can do that is by defining a common marketing and sales process. So it isn't just a sales process where people are worrying about, I've got leads and how do I close them? And it isn't just a marketing process where it's all about the lead generation. It's really looking at the entire funnel together as a common unit. So, in many ways, marketing and sales should be simple, right? We, we'll come up with some strategies, we'll execute those strategies, we'll figure out if those strategies work, and if they do, we'll analyse them, we'll learn, we'll apply those learnings, we'll do it again, and our marketing and sales should always improve. It should be a continuous improvement process, ideally. So what you need to do to make that work is define a common process, a common funnel from top to bottom. How do we generate those leads? How do we move them through the funnel? 
and how do we convert them into closed one business. And you should define clear stages of that funnel and most importantly, clear ownership of that funnel. Where does the ownership change from marketing being responsible for generating and moving through people through the funnel to when sales take the leadership in that role and they're worrying about moving them through and closing them into clients. We're going to show you some examples of how you can do that in a second. And you need clear KPIs and common goals. So if we know that from every qualified opportunity, we close one in five sales, 20% conversion rate, I can go back and work out how many leads I'm going to need <coughs> excuse me, to generate those. What's my follow-up time going to be? So if marketing generate a lead, how long do we expect sales to, to take before they have their first engagement? Is it a day? Is it a week? Is it a month? If I'm generating leads as a marketeer, I want my sales guys to be on top of those leads and following them up really quickly with an agreed turnaround. Not that it's end of quarter and they're busy, and we want them to be on top of those leads that we generated here and now. So, let me show you how we do this at Workbooks. This is our common sales and marketing funnel. And right at the very top, we generate leads. And they come from all sorts of sources. Hopefully, some of you will be leads in our funnel today. So we've got leads coming in from trade shows, we've got leads coming in from social media, from paid advertising, from all sorts of different places. Those go into the top of our, uh, our funnel. Now one of the downsides of an event like today is we don't know whether you work for companies that are likely to be Workbooks customers. Do you meet the profile of organisation that would typically buy CRM from us? So as leads come in, we will want to qualify them into marketing qualified leads, leads that we think are the right shape for us to then move through into the sales process and into the sales team. So the key inflection point for us is here, where we hand over a lead to the sales team and their job is to do what we call BANTS qualification. Do you guys know what BANTS is? Yeah, so the salespeople in the room do. So it's a mnemonic for qualifying an opportunity. It stands for budget, authority, need, time scale and size. So do they have a budget? Do we, know the, do we know who's going to make the buying decision? That's the authority. Do they have a problem we can actually solve? Are they going to buy something fairly soon? And how big's the deal? So what we're looking to do here is qualify the opportunity for those characteristics. Now at Workbooks, we actually don't use B for Bants because we help customers typically define the budget for their investment in CRM. But we do want to know what's the buying process, what's the time scale, what's the size, and what's, um, what's the authority in the, for the deal. So our sales team will sales accept an opportunity from marketing and it gets done on a date. So our BDRs, our business development team, are paid on when the sales opportunity is accepted by the sales team. That means the sales team think this is the right shape of organisation for them to spend time on. So the early stage of our funnel is owned by marketing and business development and the latter stage of our funnel is owned by the sales team. And we have three ways out of our funnel. My favourite way is that you buy something. That's the closed one. That's where we'd like all of our deals to go through. But they don't all go that way. Some of them get qualified out and some of them are lost. And these are very important that they're different. Qualified out tells us that actually they weren't the right shape. So whilst we first thought they would be a good fit for us, turns out they weren't. Maybe they were a recruitment business and we don't sell to recruitment. Uh, so we look at the qualified out opportunities to work out, well, why did we bring them into our funnel in the first place? Because either we shouldn't have been marketing to them because they weren't the right shape of organisation to us to be reaching out to, or we shouldn't have put them into the sales process because either they weren't ready to go yet or they weren't the right shape. So qualified out analysis is a really effective way of us improving the early stage of the funnel. Lost, well that means they might have bought Salesforce, and we don't like that, but sometimes people buy our competitors. Um, and we then have to work out why. Did we not get our value proposition across properly? Did the sales guys not execute effectively? We, we want to look at the lost analysis because it tells us much more about our sales performance than it does about our marketing performance. 
Does that make sense? So using these two different exit routes from our funnel, we can really focus on improving the top part of it or improving the bottom part of the funnel. So let me give you some hypothetical companies. So we've got two companies. Let's call them Company A and Company B. Wasn't very inventive. I apologise for the lack of inventiveness on these company names. But if we work on the assumption that both companies generate a thousand leads and that both companies win a, a 10 deals from those thousand leads, they've got a one in a hundred conversion rate from the very top of their funnel. And that's not unusual in some of the organisations we work with. You might think these companies have very similar sales and marketing execution capabilities. But if you break down the stages of the funnel and work out how you align the sales and marketing teams, you can see quite different results. So in company A, they take a thousand leads and those end up being 50 qualified opportunities for the sales team to run. So their conversion rate from the top of the funnel to the midway point of the funnel is one in 20. Their bottom part of the funnel, so they take 50 qualified opportunities and they make 10 sales, so they're converting one in every five deals or 20% conversion rate, you can see their sales execution is actually okay. 20% would be a fairly decent conversion rate, but the top part of their funnel is very holy, very much more like a sieve than a funnel, lots of stuff coming out of the top part of their funnel. Company B, well, they're a bit different. So the bottom part of the funnel for company B is they take 100 qualified opportunities and only make 10 sales. So their bottom part of the funnel conversion is 10 to 1 compared to company A's who are at 5 to 1. But actually, this marketing team over here is doing a much better job. So they're delivering much better opportunities into the sales funnel, converting 10, 10 leads into uh, one opportunity compared to company A. Does that make sense? By looking at the different parts of the funnel, we get a very different perspective on the way these two organisations are operating. So, given that, if we can align sales and marketing, we can hopefully improve the top part of the funnel and the bottom part of the funnel. And let me talk a bit about how you might do that. So, top part of the funnel. That was a problem for company A, predominantly. So, What's marketing's role? Well, marketing should be leading this because they're responsible for the top part of the funnel. So what they should be doing is looking at why are we qualifying out of deals? They came down through the, the process, but they came out. Well, are we marketing to the wrong people? Is our email list, for example, the wrong types of organisations that we're outreaching to? Maybe they should be looking at implementing some scoring because maybe those leads were too early stage and we need to nurture those people through the funnel before we put them into the sales organisation. So can we look at some email workflows? Can we look at some lead scoring to move those people when they've had more interaction with the marketing contact rather than they fill in a form and we put them straight into the sales process? They need to define what sales ready looks like. And that's a conversation they need to have with the sales team. And they need to look at where their leads are coming from. So which ones of those 20 one in 20 are actually working. So is it the PPC campaigns that are working? Is it the events? Is it the uh, social media? Work out which are the channels that are really working for them and review and implement their best practice. But sales have a really important role here as well. And if, if sales consider the top of the funnel a marketing problem, you don't have aligned teams because sales are the people actually out there talking to the, the prospects. They can tell you what's working, what's not. So they should be helping you refine your ideal customer profile because we're clearly marketing to some of the wrong people. So we need more input from sales to help us understand what is the right shape of organisation or persona that we should be marketing to. They should be maybe providing some input in the content. What is the content that we know works when we're out talking to customers in the real world? They should be ensuring that they're recording why opportunities were qualified out. Were they qualified out because it was an organisational fit wasn't right? The customers weren't ready to go yet. They, they didn't have their budgets lined up. It's really sales' job here to help marketing understand how they can generate the right type of leads that are either ready to go or the right shape for the sales organisation. They have a really important role. So rather than moaning at marketing about why they're not generating the right leads, 
they should roll their sleeves up, come into the marketing meetings with you and work out how they can help. So let's look at the bottom of the funnel and see how we can align the two teams differently here. So if you remember company B, that was all about the sales execution. They were taking 10 opportunities and only making one sale. So a 10% 10 10 conversion rate, that's not a good conversion rate. So sales should be leading with the win-loss analysis. So why aren't we winning those deals? Is it pricing? Is it our competitive positioning? Are we missing some product features? What are the issues that mean that companies engaged with us, but ultimately bought somebody else's product or service? They need to understand the metrics. Is our problem that we've got one really good sales guy and 10 rubbish ones? Or have we got half a sales organization? You think you've got one really good one? Okay, you're good to know. Um, so what's the mix? Is it that we have a problem with our sales team and we may need to do more training, more product awareness with them? Why are they taking those deals and not converting them into sales? So it's not just reviewing the individual reps performance, it should be reviewing the performance at the different stages. So do we often come in second? That's the worst place to be as a salesperson. We do all the work, but they ultimately don't get chosen as the right solution. And is that because your pricing strategy, for example, isn't right, or you didn't build enough credibility at the end? So sales can very much take the lead here, but marketing have a crucial role to play lower down in the funnel. How can they help the sales guys move people through, that, th through the funnel? Is it they need to provide better content? It could be customer case studies. As you go through a sales process, you know, as people are beginning to buy, they want to know who else is using these products and services. So marketing can be creating the right content for the right stage in the process. So at Workbooks, lots of our marketing content is about helping you select the right CRM technology or working out what your CRM requirements might be. So marketing is helping there in the top end of the funnel. But as you go down, we do things like building a business case. So how do you build the budget to justify the investment in CRM? And for our customers, that's often the last thing we do with them. So marketing have a crucial role in workbooks in helping us with the bottom part of the funnel, not just the top part. Also providing insights. So what's going on on the website? Can we see the prospects coming in, clicking on content? I'm going to talk more in a minute about insights and how we can use that to improve the bottom part of the sales process. Does that all make sense so far? Great. So you can see. If sales and marketing are working well together, they can really be helping each other with the different parts of the funnel and different parts of the process. So what's key to all this is technology. It's very difficult to have a common view of your marketing and sales process if you're all using completely different technologies that don't talk to each other. Right, so if you're using MailChimp and you're using Salesforce, don't to start with, but if you are, at least connect the two things together, right? So you can see whether the data is flowing through the systems. You can see where the metrics are and see what's going on. It's very difficult to get a common view of your business if you can't report on the journey the customers have gone through. And if you're doing that well, your CRM technology should actually be giving you insights that allow you to align sales and marketing even more closely. Let me talk about some of those. So, bottom part of the funnel, Sales uh, customers on the website looking at pricing pages. If marketing can surface that information to the sales team there and then this morning, sales guys will love you, right? Because you're telling them there and then there's real insight from the marketing work that you're doing that will help them get the deal over the line. Blog article generates lots of leads. Brilliant. Let's create more content like that. Or your sales guys are telling you that that, uh, that article was really interesting and they sent it out to customers to follow up. Here's a good example of where CRM done well will tell you really good insight. Why has one of my customers stopped buying from us? Sales guy's left maybe, maybe he's taken them to a competitor. But getting some insight from your system. So marketing might want to go back and re-energize that customer, reach out to them in a different way. Top 10 accounts giving negative feedback. So marketing do surveys, ask your customers, what do they think about? the product or services they've had from you recently. Feed that information back into the business and act upon it. We talked about your one great salesperson doing a really good job. Let's take that best practice and, and put it across the entire sales organization. 
or we've got lots of issues with a particular product. Let's work out why there's a problem in the business. So again, marketing and sales can work together to deliver the insights that enable you to grow your top line revenues and improve your performance. Back to the stats at the beginning, 36% revenue growth over three years if you align the teams together. So, my key five takeaways. Sales and marketing is a common process. It really shouldn't be a sales and marketing team. It should be a sales and marketing team, or maybe even a marketing and sales team working together. You need common goals and common metrics. Everyone should understand what a marketing qualified lead looks like, what an ICP customer looks like, what a sales accepted opportunity looks like, and align the metrics and your process together so you're looking through a common lens. And get your teams working together around content. The sales guys are out there talking to customers every day. They know what's interesting for them. They know what's working and they know what's not. Make sure they're providing that knowledge back into marketing so you can produce the best quality content. And obviously communications key goes without saying, but if you do this well, your sales and marketing meetings, your weekly meetings, your monthly meetings, should be looking at this metrics together. How many opportunities did we generate? How many converted into the sales process? How many qualified out? How many won? How many were lost? Why were they lost? And join the technology stacks up so this allows this process to work well for you so you can align sales and marketing and grow your revenues. Okay, I think that's me. Thank you for your time and I hope you found that useful. So much brighter, new song in my